man, my eyes are really puffy this morning. And I put on, um, I, I, cause I always get up in the morning and put castor oil on them. So I always see my eyes first thing in the morning and they're not always really puffy. And I felt like I slept good. Cause I was the one who woke up, even though it was like two 30, but I woke my, so I woke up and I was just laying there. I was thinking, I feel like I'm pretty good. I don't feel sleepy anymore. And, um, but I feel like my eyes that it's, um, it's because it's so stopped up here. It's like I'm really clogged up and it's like this fucking rain and rain and now they're getting, and there's so much of this goddamn fucking pollen space dust shit all over my fucking yard. It's like everything is coated thickly. It's like motherfucking shit, man. And, and then it's going to be like uh, this uh, starting today, it's supposed to be sunny and warm. And so I, fuck. I just I fucking fuck with us. I swear to God, <laughs> it's just it's so annoying. But anyways, um, because I was gonna, um, I, I mean, as I'm healing and stuff, you know, then you want to see like the improvements, <clears throat> like if it's in your skin, and then I'm always looking for improvements in my eyes. I mean, I, and if you don't know all the history with my eyes, I'll do a brief synopsis. So I, um. I had started wearing glasses when I was a kid, like in fourth grade or something, which added to my insecurities because I was like, I had a lot of labels. <laughs> like, there's a lot of things you could bully me on. And I, well, I, I was a fucking mess. I, I had bad complexion at some point. I was just you know, like, oh, God. So, anyways, that was me. And, um, and, you know, I was like a misfit in high school, but boy, those boys outside of high school, those men, they were really into it. So they were the problem for me. Uh, but high school was just kind of, uh, you know, I don't, it was a very insecure time for me. And so uh, I had started wearing glasses. So anyways, when they started with this LASIK thing, I was like, oh, cool. I want to do LASIK. And I was, you know, rocking it with the money and stuff. I had a good job. I was, I'm sure I was, I don't know if I was split up with my husband at that time because there was a, when we split, I was still in nursing school. Because I had told him for years, if something doesn't change, I'm going to, back to school, I'm going to get a job, and I'm fucking leaving. And and I followed through. And then um, when I was in school, because uh, I had tried to leave several times, but I was always like, come, he had to come back. He was always putting a lot of pressure on me. And I lived in guilt. <laughs> it's like, I'm yeah, something's gone wrong. I'm sure it's my fault. <laughs> That's just the way it was. I was born the oldest child, so that was kind of a role. And so, the because um, everything is always your fault if you're the oldest. It's like, you're supposed to keep them in line. It's like, okay. Uh, I just saw this really sad story, this one oldest child, because her mom died, and she had uh, all these little siblings, like four fucking siblings, that were like 10 years younger than her. And the dad totally, like, this girl had to do everything. So see, there's people who have like sheer, serious shit to heal and people don't really realize what it is they're healing. But anyways, there's a lot and everybody's got to come to it in their own line. It's ka-ching, ka-ching, you got to figure it out. And so the, um, so when the LASIK thing came, I was like, oh, fucking cool. I'm going to get it. And so, you know, I was like, I jumped into so many medical procedures thinking, you know, like they knew what the fuck they were doing. Cause I was part of that community. And that's why that community had to bitch slap me so many times to get me the fuck out of it. And uh, I was absorbed and, uh, in trust and, <laughs> but there was some things though. There was constantly th being things opening my eyes. Like I said, when they would make people get those every year and I was like, no, I don't want that. And I started questioning them. What is it? And all that stuff. And I started seeing all these people getting sick. And I was like, this is it was it already had started me in that direction of like, okay, something's going on here. And, um, so anyways, but you know, I had gotten, you know, some in the beginning. That's why when they told me I had healed the hep C, I thought, oh, well, it's because I did that. And they said, no, there's no, so they don't have that yet. And so, um, anyways, so I got the LASIK and so, um, my vision was good and then it started deteriorating really quick with, um, I don't remember how old I was. I, they told, they said it when I got it. They said, your, um, your close-up vision will go way faster. 
and you know, in your, like in your 40s, you're thinking, okay, well, like when I'm 80 or something, I got a lot of good years in there. No, <laughs> it was fast. It was like real fast. And I was right back in having to put on readers. And that's why I don't wear them anymore because the more you wear them, the more your eyes start depending on them. This is how everything in their system works. And your eyes start depending on them. And then your eyes get worse and worse and worse. Like, fuck, I was going up. I was like in the, some of the strongest ones. And um, I struggle now, like... I, sometimes I think I misread comments and stuff. It's just like, you know, it's a struggle. <laughs> like I can't see good. And, um, but so, um, I had that was already going on with my eyes. So I was having to go to the eye doctor and get, um, my eyes checked for readers and stuff. And so one of, and I had really good insurance. So I went and got my new glasses and, um, at first they were giving me, uh, I don't even remember. There was a whole thing I went through with all their different things with bifocals, reader, like all their stuff. And, um, cause the other part of my eyes was perfect. And so, um, anyways, but readers are a fucking pain in the ass, especially when you're a nurse and you have them hanging. Like it was a pain. And, um, so anyways, that was a whole thing. But I went to the doctor all the time. I had insurance and all that stuff. And, um, and so I had been going for a long time. So this was like weird when this happened because this eye doctor came out and said that I had something wrong with my eyes. I had some deformity. That's what they were telling me in the beginning. I had a deformity. And so I, um, I'm trying to think of, um, so it had to be really close after my, um, uh, brain injury. And so I went in and, um, she started telling me, so it must've been like, it must've been my net very next appointment after my brain injury. But, um, oh man, yesterday I watched this movie. I, it is wild sometimes what they bring me <laughs> and I never see it coming. It's like, oh, this is going to be about something else. I don't ever see it coming. Yesterday uh, they brought me this movie. It was a Hallmark movie. I almost turned it off because I was like, oh, am I in the mood for a hokey, you know, like, love story kind of thing? But, um, but I, something caught my attention. So I continued to watch it. It was a guy who got a brain injury and had to, he, what his, what he went through and stuff. It was like, oh my, I was bawling. I could relate so much to, I even did a TikTok. That I could relate so much to what he was going through, especially in the beginning when you get up every day and it's like, you wake up and it's like, where the fuck am I? What is fucking happening? It's like, it's, I, people who have had a brain injury, uh, you know, it's whatever, because they can be at different severities, but fuck, yeah, that was rough when you don't know people, people, and I have done the same thing that he did in the movie. You start talking to somebody because you're just think, oh, this is so-and-so, but you have no fucking clue and you're talking to the wrong person. There's so many things where you just look like a total idiot all the time and it makes you feel so insecure. And it was like so good in that movie. And then after that one, the next one started up and I bawled through this one and it was about healing and it was some preacher who got in this horrible car wreck who was dead in the car for 20 minutes. Some guy went in and started praying with him and brought, he came back and then he, and he had been in the heavens or whatever, but it, the whole movie, and he's written a book. So his thing is a book, but the movie was about his healing. And so it wasn't all his time in heaven. His book is about his time in heaven, I think. But the movie was about his healing. And there were so many things. And it was like, I was already raw from the other thing. I was like, you guys are tricky. You guys are sneaky. And so, yeah, I was having this really, like, oh, day yesterday. It was like, oh, man. So, anyways, when I went to the eye doctor, I think this was the first time that she had said, um, I, I mean, that was the first time I'd ever heard this thing about that. I've got this deformity in my eye. And they wanted to check it because it was appearing to be uh, like glaucoma. So that's what it started all this motherfucking testing on my eyes all the goddamn time. And they wanted me to take drops and stuff. And my pressures were too high because whatever they could see in there, my optic nerve is sw swelled up up against the, like your, there's a hole for it to go through and it got jacked up. And so, and you gotta keep in mind, I had been to lots of eye doctors before this. And so it was all jacked up. So I had to do appointment after appointment. Then I had to go to specialists and all this shit. 
and I'm going to all these ones. I went to this one little fucking eye doctor place to get some cheap glasses, and this was years later, years later. Like, I can't even tell you how many hoops these fucking doctors had me jumping in. And um, the guy was checking my eyes, checking the glasses, and he was talking to me, and there kept being things that were weird on my eyes. And then um, he said, uh, he started asking me more about my history, and I said, well, I had a brain injury. So he started asking me about that. He's like, that's what's wrong with your eyes. How many motherfucking doctors have I motherfucking seen and none of them could figure it out. And then this fucking guy in this little fucking place, he uh, tells me. So I went home and I was like, oh my God, the eye thing is because the brain injury thing. When they drained all the fluid out, it, uh, it, uh, he told me, it like pulled all of that. It fucked it all up. And I had said before, this system that they had entered is a vacuum sealed system. It's like it's a vacuum it, it, it's self, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, self propelled. <clears throat> and as, so when you p cl go into it, it's like sucks and it goes, so it goes all out. And then it, so it started sucking my brain. My brain was, I don't know, it was pretty flat and it was pulled way back to the back of my head. And uh, that's when they do, that's called a, um, a, a brain herniation when it goes down and it sucks down in there and it usually die. Um, but you can't die unless you're supposed to die. So that wasn't what I was supposed to do. And, um, so it had pulled and it did the same thing with my eyes. And so, um, but I didn't know. I mean, I was in so much pain and I was so confused. Like I was having so many problems and I don't even think that my eyes started showing it as much. I think that they caused so much more damage by the things they were doing. Like if I would have, I, my eye, everything will heal on you. It just takes time. So if it's meant to heal and you're focused on your healing, then it takes time. It's not like a quick fix, like what they're always trying to sell us. And so but they fucking, you know, give me this and doing that and all this bullshit. And, um, and so then I saw another doctor. So I, I still had to continue seeing all these different doctors and another one. So I had a second one tell me that it was from my brain injury. And this could have been, um, cause once I moved here, I had a weird thing and I start having this, because I always will have these sparkles, like when I'm, they'll communicate like these sparkles. So, so when this thing started happening, I kept thinking it was something with the other side communicating. And I was telling somebody, my friend in Australia, and I was telling her and she said, you should go get a check. That could be a medical thing. And at first I thought, oh no, that just always happens. But I looked it up. And it said that was your retina separating and that it was medical emergency. It was a very emotional drive. And then my counterpart energy came in and started saying things. And I started, I, I was laughing. And it was like, it was, um, it was really a, a whole thing. And so, um, and I got down there and then they sent me to a specialist. The fucking ER doctor didn't even know what the fuck. And, um, he's going and looking it up and stuff. And it's like, okay, well, we're going to send you the eye doctor. So I went over to the eye doctor and then they looked and then they said that it was, um, it wasn't separated. It was hanging on and to watch if worse happened or something. I don't remember. And, um, so I had to start seeing these specialists, um, once I had gotten over here and then, um, they were doing the same thing as the other ones here and do these drops and all this stuff. Cause this was during 2019. Cause once 2020 happens and this, and this went bumpered right up to it because I got their last, uh, their last, um, procedure. I got it done right before lockdown. Like, no, I mean, I didn't know they were going to lock us down. Like I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, so I went and got it and then, um, uh, I had to go to my appointment, whatever, and this guy's supposed to be this big specialist, does this laser treatment on all these people. You never have to use drops again. He has such good thing. And while he was doing it, I could feel it was burning the top of my eyes off. And I was like, uh, but they do, I don't remember, they put numbing drops in there or something. 
but I had just, I could feel it. I just knew. And, um, so I went home and, uh, and then everything locked down and then I couldn't go back into the doctor or anything and you couldn't call then nobody was, nobody was at work. So you're just like, book. And, um, so it was like my whole eyes were super swollen they hurt to touch. Um, Oh, just everywhere. Oh my God. It was so painful. And, um, then, um, let me think, um, cause I can't remember all of this. I remember I'm hurting and stuff, but I don't remember if right away I started, I don't remember when the not being able to see. And, um, there was like once everything opened back up. So it was like six weeks later. And I was having so, I was having so many issues with my eyes and, uh, it was so much worse. I couldn't believe how much worse they were. And there was just floaters everywhere. And the floaters were huge, like buggy Mack trucks and they were blocking my vision. And that was making it, I, I was like a whole emotional thing, you know, because I was trying to work on my independence from having a brain injury. And then, um, it, it's just like, it kept getting knocked back. And so then it's like, fuck how, I mean, I'm not even supposed they told me in the beginning not to even drive. And, um, I, I mean, there was a certain point they didn't even want me to ride a bike, but I've gotten better. Like I can pay better attention. I can, you know, but still, if there's a lot going on, like I don't just like, it was very nerve wracking to drive into Seattle. It's always nerve wracking to drive where there's a lot of stuff going on. But I've done it and done it and done it and I've gotten better and better and better and pay better attention. And I think so much of it is about me learning how to just be relaxed, not be so like intense and like scared because then it's like, uh, you know, but that's a part of the healing too. And so it was a lot working on getting towards my independence after a brain injury, especially when they're like, oh, you're going to have to go live in a nursing home. And then my sis my stepsister who had hung herself and lived, even though she was dead for a certain amount of time, um, and came back. She, um, has a severe brain injury and she does live in a nursing home ever since she was like in her twenties or she might've been like 30. It was, it's, it was sad, but still she was so miserable all the time. She was so miserable, uh, so depressed. And now she doesn't have that anymore. Now she's a lot more happier of a person. So, um, Anyways, everything in life is for reasons. And so, um, uh, when I went in there and then they started, I don't remember what their bullshit. I started calling out. I haven't gone back anymore. I was like, this is some bullshit. And my eyes are way worse. And, um, so then, um, it's just been, and my eyes have gotten better. Like I do the castor oil. I do all the stuff internally I can and stuff, but I, they've got a lot of healing and there is, uh, and I don't know if there's like scar tissue or something over them, but they'll, I just feel like the, everything can heal. And, um, and so there's something that goes that, that is hard. To, there's just things that like block on my vision. And then, um, I still feel like I have the thing with not being able to see up close good, but I feel like that's getting better. Of just letting my eyes just sit and look at something and let my eyes get their own focus. And it may not be perfect and crystal clear cut, you know, but I can still kind of read it. I think some letters, I don't know. But anyways, if it's something that's really hard, I'll get out my little glasses. But the, um, like on the ingredients and shit, they do that shit on purpose. It's written so small in the color thing is always it's so hard to see for somebody who can't see well and so I just know they do that on purpose and um so anyways what was I on I was talking about my eyes and but it seems like there was another reason why I started talking about my fucking eyes um uh, wherever I was in my fucking talking um but did I finish about my eyes uh whatever it is, I'm still working on healing my eyes. So I still have a lot of issues with my eyes, not being able to see really good. So I don't know if that was the whole thing or what, <laughs> but this morning, um, oh yeah. Cause I was stuck and I think about, uh, the puffiness 
because I keep on thinking I want to see like after having this plastic out and everything if it's going to um you know make stuff like that go away like inflammation and stuff and like uh, but you still got to do these like lymph things too I think there's so many people that that their puffiness in their skin and then they it's like in their aging process so you get some puffiness in your skin and maybe you had a day where you're just like really tense and then the puffiness goes down and creates kind of a line or something and so then you think that that line has grown there but really it's just like you haven't relaxed it you haven't pushed you haven't like you got to do uh kindness to your face I think you know like doing a massage on your face and relaxing it and uh, you know and keep doing that stuff to move the lymph the swelling out of your face and to um, and then to relax the lines that you're holding with tension and uh, so anyways you know it, it, and then there's a lot of like well, some of us have had years of that tension and so, and I don't know if all the lines will go away, but for younger people who haven't gotten all the lines, you can prevent more by doing stuff like that, by taking care of yourself from the inside and then also caring from yourself from the outside, what you put on your skin and how you treat yourself. So those are all important factors when you are trying to, you know, figure out how to not age because some of us are trying to reverse what the damage that we've done to ourselves through ignorance and you know them tricking us then uh, but there's a lot of people you know on the back end that you can prevent this stuff it's all by lifestyle and taking care of yourself so it's just a changing and how you look at things oh yeah and I saw this uh, video today I'll see if I can put it on here too because it was good it was going really good and he was explaining about, you know, who some of these people are, these Ocinis, the Casarians, all this stuff. And, um, but then he goes into saying everything's a PSYOP, Trump's a PSYOP, he's a, what was he, I don't think he said a patsy. But the thing is, is that that is true, they're using him as one, but it is not how the people think. It is because... Like, I don't know how to explain it, but I can see it so good. But it's like, okay, so you take this group of people who are super judgmental towards him, who don't really know anything about him. They're just being led by a narrative. And so they, you know, and they, the white hats use this tension to draw in your attention, to get you to pay attention. So they'll say, you know, like, it's stormy. Now we're all on stormy again. What are we going to be talking about? And peeing, and like... Some of this stuff is so fucking absurd. Like, we've already done this. But, um, but anyways, you know, that's just going to keep on going because it didn't get everybody's attention. And it didn't wake everybody up. And, and people didn't see the truth. And so it's got to be on replay. And then, like, yesterday I saw him up talking and he was saying, um, uh, he's on trial again. I don't know if it's about the story. It's like, I know that they're talking about Stormy on this trial. Like, I don't even know all this stuff. It seems like they've got him under a whole bunch of shit. And he keeps coming out like they tell him he can't work. He can't have a business license. He can't do this. Like, taking away all his rights. And this is the thing. is like, if you have empathy towards him, then you have this caring part of you that has been awoken. Because then you're like, oh my God. You know, this is what they're doing to his rights? Like, Fuck. And, um, but you know, when you're more awake, then you see like, oh, this is just, they're doing this big show. So it all depends on what level you're at. And so, but if for the people who aren't awake, then they are having him losing all his rights. He's losing all his rights because that should help people to build compassion. And when they don't, it's because they have biases. And so when the, when everything flips, you're going to be faced with those biases. So that's what I'm saying. They're bringing all these biases to the surface because the people have to face their own biases. And he is the perfect patsy to use this because they created so much hate against him in this whole syndrome, the TDS against him, where people don't even think. They don't even fucking think. 
I use it. It's a trigger word. Boom, boom, boom. Hate, hate, hate. And it is widespread. And they created this whole thing with this psyop saying, oh, it's all fake and all this stuff. And he's a bad guy. And it's like, you guys, this is, okay. It, 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 a part of it is to understand about the gray, that everything is gray. And everything is your perspective. But the, um, but there is this, this, these two energies. There's these two opposing forces. There's good and evil, uh, or good and bad. Oh, <laughs> because it's light and dark and good and bad. So did I do the right one? Light and dark, good and bad. Okay. So, so I want to get them on the same hand. And so, um, so, you know, when there's two representing forces, but when you have biases and stuff, you don't see it because your, your view is masked through your biases. So that's what I'm saying. It's at all different levels. You may not see, you may not see what other people see. You may see more than what other people see. It's all variable and it all is going to make a difference over what you're here to learn from. So it's your own unique perspective of what you're supposed to see, but I'm sharing what I see. And so you have these two opposing forces, Joe and Dawn, and one represents control and, um, you know, he's very much of the dark where we are nothing but slaves. The other one is very much about, you know, freedom and setting things right. It's more of moral against immoral because it's, control against free control against the freedom and that is and this person is always talking about freedom he's always talking about things that are you know advanced and stuff and then he gets judged and made fun of because that is what people have to recognize is their own biases why do you why are you jumping on the bandwagon of making fun of him and stuff this is that's the that's the patsy part of it is he's being used, he's allowing himself to be used to get people to bring this stuff up inside of them to release their darkness. Because darkness is what creates your biases. And that is all based on your ego and, you know, I'm better than other people. And and then and it's been so manipulated. You've been so misled by these people. And then, then this is how they work. This is what they do. And so... Him talking is trying to bring light to the situation, but you can only see the light if you can see past your biases. So some people can see it and that creates division because the people who can't see it, but I'm not arguing with anybody because I can fucking see it and I know what the fuck I see. And you know, wherever you are in the journey is your place. So, um, but in this recording thing that this guy had, and I think it's a YouTube guy. I think the guy whose TikTok I saw it on, it wasn't him talking. I think he was sharing something he had found on YouTube. So, and this guy, he's like, he looks like an actor. It's funny. But um, I, I can picture the actor he looks like. But, I, uh, but he's got these like black horn rim glasses. He's got like this brown curly hair that kind of sticks out. Um, he, he might comb it down. I might be getting the two guys confused, but they look so much alike. But in the, he seems like he's going to small, be smart. Like he says a lot, like he's, he's, uh, he's smart. The things I've ever heard him saying, but so he's talking about all of these connection with the, who all these people are and the families and how uh, the bankers, like it's, it was good. I'll share it. But he, um, then he starts saying about, you know, the, the Trump is a, uh, is a patsy it's just there he's he's really going to be the new hissler which that was pushed you know back probably when they were talking about stormy pian and all their stuff but um now uh that they are um uh, so he was saying and the letter that it is um not this that the this letter that that is a big psyop which like yeah i don't understand how anybody can say that like you're not listening to what is being said in it like if, i mean i don't i don't understand what people expect from it but fuck it's real as fuck like the shit that that thing was able to fucking say years in advance and say it was going to happen on a certain date and then you're going to say it's a psyop like what you know that that 
in the, in the, I'm sure the people who try and say it's a psyop is because they think it's all set up by the dark, dark side and stuff. No, I don't see that at all. I see it as being a part of waking up people as a part of the movement towards freedom. And, you know, um, but there's a lot of, you know, different perspectives and stuff. I mean, the whole thing about the rapture and all this stuff is all created to, like, there's so many things that so many different people say and stuff. So, you know, and everybody sees different things, but this is what I see. And so I see it being more of a looking glass kind of thing and more of a getting us to see you know, it's, to help it, everything to me is about getting you to wake up when you can get on that level. Everything out there is to try and get you to snap out of it. And so, um, so, um, that in the video, he's saying that that's a big psyop and the Sargasara is, is, is a big psyop. That's not going to happen. It's like, see, this is what gets me is some people can be going really good, but then they keep going. They don't see that everything's about to flip. And that is a thing. I, I, I don't know if it just is like some spiritual people that we know. I, I don't know. It is why I hear so many people and they just keep going in the direction of like, we're all going off the cliff. <laughs> That's it, we're all going. And it's not. That is, it's like we're going to the edge and it's going to be like, and we're going to go the other direction. It's a big flip. It's a pole shift. It's a flipping of the energies. We're going to go completely the other way. So the things that, you know, where people are building towards, just think it's going to be the opposite. And that is what's going to throw so many people. Because you got to think of all these people who are out there who have big platforms right now, who are saying all of these narratives, and they don't see it coming. And it's a part of their healing. But I can see how it works, what they're, you know, how the universe has, like these loud voices that are saying things that are... Um, you know, taking you off the cliff and fear and destiny, like whatever. But that is not the direction that we're going. And so it's all a part of the awakening. That's why I say it. Whatever you're hanging on and, you know, paying attention to, it, you know, it's it, it may be there to flip you around so that you see like, fuck, because that is going to be so much of that. And it's going to be scary because I think it's going to seem like, oh, there we go off the cliff. And it's like, woo, going to go like magic and twist us back the other direction. And it's going to, that is going to be like the God showing himself. It's like, <clears throat> and that's where it becomes related to this old Bible story or something where, uh, where I've heard it related to, it might be on Roseanne's show or, or, uh, Juan, because they're even David Rodriguez. Like, there's some really religious people out there in this awakening community or, or disclosure community or whatever. So, um, but there's this Bible story where all the people, I think they were in the desert for 40 years, 400 years, feels like fucking 400. But, uh, so they were all in the desert and then the water parted so they could go through and. Uh, everything seemed at a loss. They had the soldiers uh, like close on their tail. But once the soldiers got into the water and the people got out of the water, the water closed in and uh, killed all the soldiers. And so it's going to be something magical like that. Like, whoa! It, and that is a part of the universe showing, you know. And it is a part of our direction, our movement. But it has to do with so much with um, people, like... This is the part, like, where we are the creators of it. It's going to happen. Like, it's destiny. It's going to happen. It's not like something we need to worry about. It's going to happen. But this is us. We are the ones who make it happen. And so, it's our energy shift, the way we start looking at things differently. I just saw this girl, and she was, like, really upset. Like, there are so many people, like... They're hanging on these protests. Like they're like, oh, it's the young people. They're really making a difference. It's like you guys are not seeing things clearly. Like what in the holy hell? And they're like, oh, they're winning and stuff like that. It's like they're being used. They are being used. They have on one of the uh, um, university uh, places. I don't know which one it is, but they have put a letter out. The group that's the protest, and they want. <clears throat> the all the officials to come out and um, uh, right there. It's like, you guys, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. 
They've got to see that they've been infiltrated. Like, this is a part of the awakening. This is a part of like, oh, we didn't see that. Oh, we didn't know that. Oh, we didn't do that. Oh, well. You know, that's what the awakening is about. It's like to see what you haven't seen. So what we see is a lot of people who don't see a lot of things. But it's going to be like, woo, now you're going to see. And it's going to hurt when you see. Like, that's just facts. And it's going to be because it's ego. And it's going to be because, you know, the ego is going to say, oh, you didn't see that. And then you're going to feel like, oh, my God, I'm an idiot. And so, anyways, it's a whole thing. And um, and everybody's got to go through it. And, and people are at all different levels going through it. And it doesn't fucking just stop. Your healing keeps going. It's a new way of living. There isn't like you just heal stuff. And then it's, it's, it's a, it's a change. It's a different approach to living. It's a different way of existing. And so anyways, that's what all of the awakening and learning and stuff is all about. The releasing. It's, uh, it's, it's us changing. We're changing directions. And we are changing directions because everything's changing directions. The people who are changing directions, it's because everything's changing directions. If you can't change directions, then yeah, you go off and you go somewhere else. It's like, you go learn something somewhere else. It's like, this is a different shift. And so, um, and that is the changing of the ages. And in the golden age, and, and that is all like, these are cycles that have been around for a long time. And in the, and it goes into a, a time of abundance. It's the golden age. It's when uh, everything is abundant. We don't have, we're not going to be paying for resources and stuff. We're going to live like free, like we were meant to live without this control. But, um, but anyways, the, uh, there was another thing too that that woman had said in her video uh, she was really irritated because there's so many people who are just are not awake and they just don't get it. And she's trying to, you know, but there's so many people who just keep thinking like, oh, these people are never going to wake up. They're just not going to ever wake up. It's like, you guys, <laughs> people just, they're not going to see what's coming. They're not, there's going to be so unexpected to so many people, but that's the impact. You know, not everybody's supposed to be hearing me. They're supposed to be hearing all these other people. And so I'm, I'm more of what people are going to hear after when it's going to be like, I'm more of the after play, not this time period. And so, but this time period is significant, but the next one will be too, but it will be more of like what people need. They need, you know, to get perspective, to understand what's happening and stuff. There's a lot of people who are not supposed to see this coming. And so yeah, that's what's always interesting to me. Those of you who are here with me, it's like we are having a unique perspective to what is about to occur. And uh, so anyways, it's, you know, it's very interesting. So the, um, there was another thing though that that girl had said, uh, that I want to say, but anyways, I had heard, you know, both of these different people and everybody has like a, such a negative outlook on what's to come and I don't think it's negative at all I think it's super super exciting and we're headed to someplace really good but they're supposed to feel it that way so when you're hearing people say that kind of stuff you know you got to go with how you feel on the inside if you feel like oh yeah that's because there's different groups too like this girl um she had shared an interesting thing and she said she was out in Santa Monica and she lives there for, I don't know, five years or something. And, um, or she lived there her whole life. I don't know. I think she said five years. And then the other girl who started talking to her, she had lived there like, I don't know, her whole life for 20 years or something. And so the one girl, she is all bundled up and she said, um, man, can you believe how cold it's been for the last few years? And the other girl looks at her and goes, what? And she goes, yeah, it's been so cold. It's been so different than normal. And it's so cold all the time. And the other girl looked at her and she said, um, that's weird because I thought it's been so hot. I thought it's been so extremely hot. And um, there's like these two totally different perspectives right in the same space. So 
that's the thing is that it's all different perspective and all different experiences. And I saw this guy also talking about that they found this inner earth ocean or something that's 400 miles below us, this big giant ocean in the water because everything is realms and realities. It's not like what they have sold you. You've got to get that out of your mind. You've got to get it more into everything is realms and realities and it, it, everything about your travel, your passport is your vibration. So everything is about your vibration. And the more your vibration opens, the more there's more portals and stuff. So there's going to be other ways like um, going into the inner earth will be like going into other spaces. Like it's all, it's all spaces. Like if you hear Corey Good talk about when he went into the inner earth, it was just like regular. He said it even has like sunlight that comes from this. It, it's, um, you would never know you were inside the earth and it has things flying and everything. But that is just, there's just different realities and realms and stuff. And we think, uh, you know, ours is a certain thing, but we're in the Truman Show. Ours is all this manufactured. Our, we're in a habitat. And so, and you've been told your whole life that the habitat is real. And so that's why you got to keep letting go and letting go of the reality that they sold you. And they use so much... Um, so much uh, peer pressure to try and force people into the way they want them to think. And that's why it's so uncomfortable to break free. Because you're breaking free from your peer group. You're breaking free and saying, well, I don't agree with that. I don't really think that way. And that is hard to do when you haven't healed. Like I just saw this guy. And um, I've, I've, I've been following him for a while. And he is one of the people who live van life. And um, he had gone through a bunch of struggles. Like he got stuck somewhere and then it was a job offer. And then he drove all the way there, got stuck there. And it was kind of like I could see all this was going to come. Like I, I could see it beforehand. So I wanted to watch and see, you know, if I was right. There's just a lot of things. I get a lot of confirmation on all the time. And so... Um, but then um, I started seeing his videos were popping up. One of them, it was like he was sitting in the van with this girl all of a sudden. And I thought, oh, that's weird. Did he all of a sudden get a girlfriend or something? Now is he a couple and now he's traveling with a girl? And, um, and it just was like so fast. And so then, um, you know, when I didn't see him for a while. And then all of a sudden it popped back up. And, but he's being stalked by her. And so I don't even know. It's like a whole drama thing that is going on because he, he's even got followers who start telling her where he's at. And she keeps showing, like, there's a whole weird thing. And um, and I don't even know all the details or whatever. But today he did this uh, uh, video and he was talking about boundaries and respecting people's boundaries. And when people say they don't want to be with you, that you've got to listen. When people say, hey, well, I'm just friends, I'm, I'm doing me, then you got to listen and be respectful of the person. And uh, so it was a whole thing where he was uh, talking about uh, boundaries and respecting boundaries and having boundaries. And that is what I'm saying is about the healing and about being vulnerable to speak up and speak your truth and speak your boundaries is very difficult. And so that is definitely a part of a lot of people's challenges through the healing is because we haven't been prepared for setting boundaries or even knowing that that was a way of protecting ourselves to value ourselves to say what's okay and what's not okay for us that we have all been kind of stripped of that value throughout our life um experience and so it is a part of the growing and going into the new you is stepping into that space of saying you know no that doesn't work for me no i can't do that no i won't do that and saying is what you feel about for yourself. And even when people don't agree, like, oh my God, you're such a wuss. Oh my God, you're so this. Oh my God, you're so that. To just be like, yeah, maybe so. Not care. You can't be all caught up in what they are all thinking because they're all being brewed on the inside. And you don't know what's bugging got them going. You don't know what's got them churning. And you stepping away and saying, no, I'm not doing that. It could be the best thing that ever happened to them because then all of a sudden they're going to be like, well, 
oh, I don't want to do that. And so I'm going to, you know, it will come back to them because once we all start setting boundaries, then it becomes, you know, more clear and we all can become better at setting our own boundaries because other people, it's like the more people do it, the more it becomes a safe space where, you know, that you say, oh no, I'm not doing that. Sorry. And, you know, you won't get an overreaction from somebody else trying to peer pressure you into conforming into what it is that they desire, where you say, no, that doesn't work for me. And, but it takes a lot to get to that space. And so just, you know, keep working on it, but it's definitely a big thing in our society. And you can see it playing out. You can see how it has such a toxic effect on you if you don't have boundaries. And of course, then you're going to blame everybody else. Oh, yeah, the other thing she was saying was the bear and the man. Like, I'm telling you, this doesn't all end. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Everything is bear versus men, bear versus men. And um, she was outraged because there's a lot of people who think it's just the liberals who choose to take the bear. And um, I... I say it's the people who aren't healed. It's people who, you know, got hurt by a man and then they blame all men. They think that they can't because they don't have good boundaries. They, uh, you know, they feel victimized by the man. And it, I mean, it's such an absurd thing. Anyways, like, I mean, seriously, if you were standing on the edge of a forest and there's a guy standing here and there's a bear and then you're going to go, well, I'm going to go with the bear. It's like, I'm like, it's so bizarre to me. Um, I, I, it's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe they've never been on their own in the forest or something. But so, and I'm not even completely on my own. But, you know, when I'm here in my bed and in a storm and everything in my own little cabin, I'm on my own. And um, yeah, I go out walking in the forest with Stella. I'm on my own. And so, um Anyways, you know, I, I don't know. It, I mean, that's a city way of thinking. Well, I'd take the bear any day of the week. I'm, I'm, I've got the smarts for a bear. It's like, well, why can't you, you know, get along with a guy? Especially when uh, so many women keep acting like guys are the bad. It's all guys. It's just if, if guys would change and be better, then the whole world could be a better place. It's like, but you don't understand. There is so much more to it. Like, there's women who raise these guys, like there's issues already. And there is lots of, lots of women who are mean, cruel, judgmental, bitter, negative, hateful bullies. Like what are these people talking about? Like, I, fuck, it should be like, would you go into the forest with a woman or a man? It's like, I think I would choose the man. And I don't think that, I mean, I don't automatically think, oh, well, it's, I, I, I don't know. Watch more naked and afraid. Like these people can walk around naked in front of each other and they're not humping each other. Like they are out there working and, you know, it's all in your fucking mind. And so I think more of like that, like a team and somebody who's got some muscle. I'm not going to go in the goddamn thing and, oh, well, I'm on my period. Well, I'm not feeling it. Well, I, like, I'm not, no. I don't go with the guy who's going to be like, okay, we're going to get this done. We're going to get this built. We're going to do this. You go over there and drag those over here. You know, like that's what I think. I don't sit there and think, oh, he's going to be chasing me around, lusting after me. I think, well, he probably wants to survive. <laughs> he probably wants, you know, I don't know. It's all by your perspective. But, um, and she was really outraged, you know, because everybody with their black and white thinking, and she did say, you know, people need to get into the gray, which, you know, that is part of as you awaken, you keep seeing like, there is no good or bad. That's what we're breaking free from. That is, that's why this, these two representations are there just for the, the polls so you can register and see because this is about you getting to see yourself and so there's a register happening so that you can find your balance between these two poles but then the poles are going to go and there is going to be it's going to be this flood of light that comes in but you you have to be a whole you can't just you can't just be of the light either being of the just being uh, you know, I mean, what is that? Anyways, that, that, is that no boundaries? Because you can't hurt people's feelings. Like, you know, everything is about you finding your balance. It's not about you being extra special good. 
because what is that? It's about you figuring out how to be in balance, how to keep yourself safe, to be true to yourself, to be real, to be authentic, to you know, all those things. So it's not about trying to be better than somebody else or, uh, you know, all good and not have, because we all, so many people carry so much darkness. They're flooded with darkness and they don't even know and they're not going to know until the lights come on, until that mirror is sitting right in front of them and the lights come on and then they're going to see, oh, it was me. Oh, I was doing that. Oh, I the way I thought is my own perspective is what my problem was. That is what, so that people can heal it. Because you can't get people to see stuff. It's not even our duty. Like, we're not meant to be here to fucking get somebody. Look, look, look. This is what's wrong with you. Look, look. And that's not what we're meant to do. That We're not meant to try and get people to see what's wrong with them. And even trying to point things out, it gets people, like, just think of when people have said stuff to you. How it just gets you, it's just like almost like one of those things. It just keeps replaying and replaying and replaying and replaying. And it's like more problems for somebody to deal with. But you have your own things, your own focus of what it is that you need to focus on, deal with, heal or whatever. So whatever somebody else thinks is your problem is not... You know, but they, it's like they share their problems with you, but you don't have to absorb it. You don't have to take the information that they're trying to give you because that is toxic. We're not supposed to be doing that to each other. It's about finding yourself internally, not having everybody tell you, but that is what is developed in our peer pressure reality where they have tried to use each other to keep us all in line. So that's their herd mentality to keep the, the bullies on the outside, to keep the rest of us on the inside. But that is like, that's why it's uncomfortable to break free from because you do have to just, you know, you have to take out some bullies. Like, oh, don't talk to me that way. And, um, and there's a lot because the people who are of that energy is, um, it's, it's like they've, they've cranked it up. It's, it's way bigger. So there's way more challenges. It is this, it's this, it's this part of the shift. So that part is going way up, but we have to meet that energy. Like we have to learn how to take, um, responsibility for ourselves to, and that's the biggest part too, of this stuff with women is the, the victimization. I don't know what all the men's stuff is because I'm not a man and I don't live their, their lives and no, you know, like I can't tell somebody else what their life thing is about. But, um, to me, uh, women have come into a place of being victimized. They just feel like victims all the time. And, uh, and, but that's where you have to learn your own powers. Like you're not a victim. You just have not learned to have boundaries. You haven't learned how to protect yourself. You haven't learned to have good discernment and all those things, but all these things are there to help you learn that. So you can see like, oh, I chose that guy because he looks so good, but then he's a total dick. And, um, you know, those are lessons. Those are things that souls need to learn and see. And that person was there to teach you that. And so there is all of these things to learn. And, and, and it isn't about what somebody else has learned. Like when you go into observation and you're watching what somebody else is learning, like you're seeing, you know, your friend and she's in a relationship and she's getting beat down all the time. And, you know, you can watch from your perspective. You're not going to get the whole story, but you can, you can observe and you can see and you can learn like what she's going through. Like, well, I wouldn't fucking take that. And like, so then but be prepared because the universe will test you. They will bring in tests. So when you're watching an observation and don't get too judgy and stuff, um, just try and learn from what other people's experiences are. But and there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of fuck. Like we are drowning in experiences right now. Like fuck. It's intense, man. And that was another thing too yesterday. The energy. I, I couldn't even barely get off the couch. It was like, and I felt like so exhausted 
you know, so then it's like, man, I just not get enough sleep or is it the energy on the planet right now? And I saw something like, I know there's Schumann, oh, there was an X or two M class flares and stuff. So I know there's, there's a lot of energy and we got the fucking anomaly. Who knows what the fuck? That has got to be some kind of frequency or an energy weapon or something. And who knows where the core of it is. But it's, it's something. It's got to be something artificial that they're using to create more chaos or storms or something. It, but they're going to keep being storms and stuff. Like, even after they, they go down, the planet is re... Um, redesigning itself it's like changing the landscape she's rolling over so and our history will go down into the water into the forest you know our history will go hidden just like all the other histories and we'll build a new world in a new reality but that reality won't go away it will always be a reminiscent or a remnant of the past of the planet it's a part of her it's her scarring it's uh you know it's like her lines on her face and so it's a part of her gosh that's emotional because i can feel it man she does have some fucking stuff man of how humans have treated her it's not just humans i mean uh you know there was a lot of um manufacturing manipulation and stuff like that but still like people are just going throw their garbage down on her and just don't care about her. It's so common. Uh, just, you know, not know, you know, the beauty behind, like, she fucking sprouts up things that you need right at your feet. Um, like, so, anyways, there's the whole, you know, changeover of our landscape. That's going to go down. And, um, and these places, heavy populated places, will be gone. They'll go underground, underwater, under mud, whatever it is. And so we still have all that to go through. That's why I still say, you know, moving out of the cities. But there's going to be more of that, I think. I think there's going to be mass exodus at some point where they're going to really push. Is right now, like I've said, I think they're pushing people through um, political agenda and uh laws and stuff that this absurd stuff that they're trying like there's so much absurd shit in california and i think it is to keep pushing people out of california but then you see like the people who get all caught up in different things and they're not paying attention to you know some of them don't know the laws that are being passed and stuff and but the people who are really hyper alert on that stuff are out there saying it and stuff but there's a lot of people who don't know that there's a lot of absurd shit that is kind of, I think, is like the universe pushing people to be like, well, you don't want this, do you? Like certain places, like even over here where I am, where they just push into this, we'll protect you, but you're our slave. <laughs> you can live on our farm, but you're going to work for us. That's, you know, what they want from us. And, uh, you know, we're nothing to them. We're a burden, so work for them. And so anyways, but we are... Now, this is our God-given right. They're the ones who, they're the colonizers. They're the ones who have come in. And we have a birthright. I don't know about some of these fucking thousand-year-old, some of these people are fucking way, way old. And um, they just body jumped. They, they just go body jumping or something. So anyways, but, um, you know, there is a God-given right. And then there's going to be, I think, this t a certain period of time where there's going to be like these big, uh, evacuations where they're going to move big groups of people and I think they're going to keep moving if you pay attention there will be places on the, the doomsday map I think they're going to keep moving people into those places to get people into safer places so uh, it's not going to be like that we're all going to just be eaten up by the ocean if if people are eaten up by the ocean it's because that's how they were meant to their exit and so it's their way out of the game but um, the people who are in the game for the, the changeover to go into the next stage, that they will um, keep moving into safer places. And so, but there's going to continue being earthquakes and volcanoes and all this stuff. And I don't know if it will be less because they are doing stuff to try and create more stuff. 
but and maybe this will be the most of it maybe you know maybe what is going to be the part that's going to wake everybody up is maybe it's going to be a big tsunami like maybe this anomaly is going to really cause some big things to go on like right now it's over by africa i think it's over by africa when they do that little thing it's um until tomorrow for sure it, it gets really huge too this thing goes huge so um I got I don't know what what you know all I can say is you know don't be scared to just don't live in fear don't be scared of any of the stuff going on keep I do all the time I constantly am like this isn't even real this isn't even real just keep reminding yourself this isn't real this isn't real it feels real it feels real but it's meant to feel real so that you can learn but it's not real. So anytime you start feeling overwhelmed or scared or anything, just keep reminding yourself, okay, this isn't real. This isn't real. This isn't real. You know, you're in a dream. You're in a dream. You're in a dream. It's like, it's like the same thing. Um, because when, you know, if everything went dark, you'd still be there. You'd still be the energy. We'd all, if every, and there's things where people have said that this is going to happen in QHHTs and stuff. So I don't know. But it's going to be like all of a sudden there's no light at all. There's nothing. Our you, our whole story is gone. Everything is gone around us. And all it is is just us, our energy. And we're just there in the dark in our energy. But we still have a sense of self. Like I'm telling you, you are exactly the same. Like people think their body is who they are. It's not. <laughs> you are not. That is like... It's like, a, it's like your shadow. It's like you going around saying that your shadow is who you are. That shadow over there, that's, that's me. No, it's not. And that is the same thing. You're just represented by a vision, but it isn't you. And so the, um, so as the, uh, if, if everything went off and all of a sudden the people realize, you know, what they are and then the new one starts, the new, um, the new, uh, the new scenery, the new landscape, the new reality, the the new age. So I don't know. I've just heard that kind of scenario playing out, and <clears throat> and I don't know at what time too, because we still have the. And I don't. I, I mean, there's a whole thing about the blacks, and like there's more things in prophecy. Like as for I always pay attention to prophecy, but I don't just. With the Bible prophecy, it's kind of like, where does it line up with the other prophecy? Because the Bible has been manipulated. So you can't just ride everything on the Bible to me. But I know a lot of people do. That's the book they turn to. That book holds the truth. I just think that book is manipulated as fuck. So, but there's a lot of little prophecy. And like I've always been saying is, look for crossover. Look where there's, you hear repeat information. And it may not sound the same sometimes, but you have to think about it and see like is it saying the same kind of thing and um and seeing but the this uh because the time of mirrors is the time of healing and so that is going to be like there's another period that comes after like everything is like a domino but we have to go through this domino and this is all leading up to this and oh yeah the fucking that is absurd oh my god the absurdity was like i've seen some people keep on sharing these videos this one girl yesterday she had done this video she had shared this video of the uh met gala thing or something and i said something about like um i don't know some comment about the absurdity of it or something and then and this is her post and she says well um you probably shouldn't watch that because of um, whatever it was. Like, don't give them your energy and don't watch that stuff. And um, I can't even remember, but it was very much like, what? And so um, I said, well, I didn't watch. What I saw was on, on TikTok, everybody's sharing these videos just like you just did. <laughs> like, what? And um, I said, I went off and went and watched a movie because I have no interest. But it's like one video after another. I was like, God damn, you guys don't want attention to it, but that's all you do. <laughs> like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> so, um, so I've seen more and more of these ridiculous bugging outfits. Oh my God. It is so fucking in the, in one, who was it? Cardi B. She needed nine men to carry her dress. Nine men. And she said that made her, uh, you know, better than other people or something. But that's the absurdity. That's the part, you know, that's going to keep showing and showing and showing. And it has people so outraged. There's so many people who can't even believe they spent $75,000 for these dumbass tickets to come in these dumbass dresses and walk around, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, patting each other on the back, telling each other how well, fucking wonderful they are. And, and so... Um, absurd and it keeps coming into my mind because there's that whole Jim Carrey interview where it was um he was in it seemed like a parking lot or something and there was one of these fucking dumbass shows I don't know which one it was but it was one of these fucking things like let's all just get dressed up and go fucking talk about how cool we are and um it was something uh the interviewer was trying to say stuff to him and he kept saying stuff that was way off near she was like what <laughs> she didn't even know what to do and um but he had uh she was saying oh this is a celebration of icons and he was like um well oh, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard icons or oh, do you believe in icons and stuff so he's always been trying to get people to see to get people to, to listen, but there were so many times where he just got like, oh, he's crazy. Hey, look how crazy he is. He's lost it. He's gone crazy. So they just try and push on that and make like he's gone crazy. But he fucking was saying the same stuff, you know, about how ridiculous it is. And look at how many years now it takes for the people to be like, oh my God, this is so ridiculous. And, um, but uh, $75,000 for these tickets for the Met Gala, and um, I don't know, is it supposed to be for the, the Met? Because they always give these big donations. So is it for, to give to the museum? Like, they need all this money. No, it's a fucking laundry system. It's all fucking bullshit. It's just all fucking nonsense. It's so fucking annoying. But it is, this, this one is like the peak of uh, ridiculousness. Like, and some of these dresses and how absurd and how up the, there, you just go watch any of these things. These people are so far up their own ass. They don't even fucking have a clue. And there's so many fucking people doing these videos now of showing them and then showing what's really happening in the world. And it's like, these people are just fucking clueless. They're just, but th that is a part of our society that is showing us is waking us up. So you got to remember it's roles is there so many people like that they want to go hunt people down and stuff. It's like they're, but that is their own anger at themselves for being latched on. The more you pull free and the more you can laugh at yourself. Remember, you got to laugh at yourself through this shit is, um, to see, you know, is, um, that, so you're not angry and not blaming. It's not somebody else's fault. It's not somebody else's fault that you got caught up in, you know, it was, it was pushed on us for one thing. It was a way to allure us, to get us all distracted, to get us all chasing our tail. And yeah, some of those people got way up their own ass over it. And they got way up in their ego and started believing that they are, you know, better than other people. And it's going to come right, it's pouring out of their mouth because you can't hide your truth anymore. Whatever, however you see. And some of them look like, you know, just imbeciles. Some of them look like just brainless. Some of them look like desperate. Uh, you know, just, <clears throat> it's, you know, whatever they have to learn or experience, but it's nothing that we need to go and, you know, go low. We're going to go get them. They're trying to trick us. Uh, well, for one thing, they work for people who are running the world. So, yeah, they, it's not like they have a choice. <laughs> like, if they're told you're going to go to this party, you better get a dress, then... I think they have to go. And I had heard it. Who was it? Was it Kanye or something? I don't remember. It was somebody talking about, like, they'll say, like, you know, these actors have $150 million or something like that. But the people who are in control don't, they don't get all access to their money. So, these, I don't know what, what all goes on. But I don't think it's something where you need to be so mad at these people. And who knows if they really are paying 75K. And if, and if it, 75K is nothing to them, like, yeah, it's a fucking year's wages to a lot of people. 
a lot of people, and it's really hard to a lot of people who are struggling right now, who uh, can't feed their families, and yeah, they're mad and outraged and stuff, but that is all, remember, to whatever they're feeling, it's what their soul came in to feel, because it was going to bring up stuff from their other lives that they need to purge out. So, you know, everybody's got to feel their feelings and go through their experience in order to get to the next stage. So whatever stuff is coming up, yeah, you got to release it and really think about it, you know, when, when that kind of stuff is outrageous to you, you know, go in and feel the feelings, go in and feel because, you know, I'm sure you have lived it at times where this out of balance in society, like they've kept it this way for a long time, you know, that, um, where they had control and they, all they've done is work towards more control over us. And, and it doesn't even go to just controlling our time. They want to control our minds. And now they've gone past that. They want control of our bodies without us knowing it. They want us on their, you know, so they can go into their computer, you know, make you all of a sudden hit yourself in the head. Oh, did you see what we did? And they're watching through their TV. So, yeah, they're, they're just getting worse and worse and worse. But, you know, it's not going to go in their direction. That's just the way they want it to go. But we're all waking up and being, you know, and that's the change. That's when everything is going to be changing. That's why the awakening is so important. That's why you got to let all these people play their awakening out. They've got to go through their experience. And there is all these different things that are about to happen that is going to be the true awakening. Because I'm telling you, there is a shit ton of people who think that they're so awake. They think they're so much ahead of all these people. But then go and listen to them talk. And they're very negative. They're very divisive. They don't see any future. It's like, no, they're not awake to the whole thing. They're not in touch probably with their soul either. And so, or some of them that that is their end. That is, you know, they aren't going forward. So it's all different things. It's all different levels. And we can't save anybody. You can't, you know, save somebody and try and convince them or show them. Everybody will see what they're supposed to see when they're supposed to see it. And whatever the aftermath is, is what we all have to heal from. Because you got to keep reminding yourself too is uh, not only is this not real, but you came here for it. <laughs> like you came for this experience and you knew what the experience was beforehand. And, oh, this was kind of a cool thing too, because um, this was a girl who was telling a ghost story and she had bought a car. And when she, so she went and bought her first car and she was like in high school or college or something. So she went and bought this car, but there ended up being a ghost girl in this car. So she wouldn't drive her car for a long while because she was so freaked out because this girl was always sitting in her car and the girl would never do anything or acknowledge her. Cause at some point the girl started trying to talk to the girl and the girl wouldn't talk back or anything. She would just sit and look straight ahead. And she would never do anything. She would just always be there in the car. And so the girl was just totally freaked. Like, And it was a little um, oriental girl. And so she didn't know. Um, and she has um, her grandma or something is um, was oriental. So she decided to ask her, did we have a relative die? And she said no. And then she asked her what was going on. And she told her. And she said, she's there to protect you. And so the girl tried, even though she was scared, she tried to just like go with it. And she said the girl would only be in the car that she could see her when it was just her and the girl. When there was other people in the car, you couldn't see the girl. And she could always see it when it was just her and the girl. But then like five years later, she went, um, she was driving through an intersection and this car, just, and she said that there, she saw a cop. So she looked down at her speedometer to see if she was speeding. And right then this truck just came out of nowhere and just slammed into her and um, uh, took off the whole front of her car. It was like a really bad wreck. Spun her around and spun her around and it was a really bad wreck. And so she, um, but she lived and then she, um, so then it was like a couple years later or something. It was a couple years after she got the car and that happened. And then a couple of years later, maybe it was the next year. Maybe it was just a year later or something. And she was at a place where there was a, a psychic doing tarot cards and stuff. So she went over to talk to them, to um, ask them, you know, whatever. And the guy knew about the wreck. He knew about the girl. He knew he was telling her this stuff. He was asking her about it. 
and she said that um, it was freaking her out. But he said, but it, she was listening to him because how would he have known this? How would he know this stuff? Because he kept knowing things that he had no way to know. And so then um, he said that was the little girl in the car who moved the steering wheel because she didn't see anything happening. The little girl in the car grabbed the steering wheel and turned it real quick. And then the little girl disappeared. She's never been around since this wreck. And it was because she, the little girl died in that car and she didn't want this girl to die in the car. But that is how a soul sees is like in an instant, it can see the whole future. And so that is where you got to understand is that you as your soul knows your whole life. It isn't a surprise. You came here for this and you knew it ahead of time. You knew it before you were birthed in. You came for everything that you are here for, for this experience. And so, um, but see that girl, even when she had uh, left the reality, she could see what was the future. And she made a choice to stay there and protect this girl. And, um, you know, and it's... Yeah. It can be, you know, she has a soul connection. Like, there's all sorts of more things. You know, you, you won't ever feel like, probably, that you know all the answers to everything. But, you know, you can definitely get to a place where you feel like you have an understanding of what the fuck's going on. And it's like, I fucking feel like that. I feel like, oh, I get what's going on here. Like, um, so anyways, just uh, know, like... You, your soul can see the whole thing just like when my dad was leaving and this happens so much to people who are leaving but when my dad was leaving how he kept seeing what was to come and he was telling people in the room what was to come and it was stuff about me that he was saying too and so um anyways that whole uh thing is because when your soul isn't in the experience and it's out it can see so much more I feel like that is when I'm looking out, that that is what I'm going through, is seeing out, I don't know, seeing through my soul's eyes, seeing things, like I, I don't know how to explain it, I just know I can do it. So, um, anyways, I, the, anyways, just whatever, <laughs> I don't even know. Now I feel like I've been talking plenty long, but I don't know if I said anything. I don't know what I said. I just feel like sometimes I feel like it's just like we're going on a twisty little merry-go-round or a, a roller coaster. No, it's not a roller coaster. I don't think it's like overly emotional, <laughs> but sometimes it's like, man, I just make a bunch of spaghetti here. So anyways, hopefully I said something that you can decipher that makes sense to you. But, um, but that, you know, everything that is going on is about, your advancement as a soul is that you being able to, and it comes from within you. It's you're the one who has to do it. Nobody can do it for you. So you have to have like self-motivation, self-preservation. It's all about you. And you got to remember when it's all about you, you got to love yourself because that makes all the difference. And you got to love everyone because everyone needs love. And you have got to make the choice for yourself to have a loving day. So love yourself. Love everyone and have a loving day and I'll talk to you later.